Hello, hello. I'm Dr. Greg Zorsky, the Director of Diagnostic and Interventional Neuroradiology at the University of Maryland Medical Center here in Baltimore. I have a team of eight neuroradiologists who are dedicated to evaluating and studying imaging and procedures related to the brain and spine. This includes MRIs and CAT scans of the brain and spine as well as procedures like myelography and angiography. Interventional radiology and neuroradiology are fields that have made medical treatments easier for patients, safer, and quicker to perform. We're now able to intervene to treat uterine fibroids without surgery. Uh, we, can, uh, we can use less invasive procedures to treat cancers in patients with strokes. We can try to intervene quickly to reverse the effects of the stroke, to repair an aneurysm or a vascular malformation, and even repair narrowed carotid arteries without having an open surgical procedure. Right now, we're in our newest digital angiography suite. This is a biplane room where we can actually look into a patient's head both from the front and from the side as we're performing procedures like occlusion of vascular malformations or coiling of aneurysms. This morning, we performed a procedure in here on a gentleman who had previously had two aneurysms in his brain clipped with a traditional surgical approach. This morning, we were able to treat a third aneurysm uh, in a matter of about two hours by placing a very small catheter uh, into the vessels at the base of his brain, entering the aneurysm, and placing those coils into the sac of the aneurysm so that the aneurysm would be occluded and minimize the chance that it would ever bleed and cause him harm. An aneurysm is a weak spot in a blood vessel that leads to saccular enlargement, and these small sacculations can rupture and bleed, causing what's known as a subarachnoid hemorrhage. When we do a cerebral angiogram, we're able to visualize these an aneurysms, understand their shape and morphology, and make a determination about the treatment options. We see the carotid artery entering the skull base and giving rise to branches at the base of the brain. This sacculation, this round area here, represents an abnormal weak spot in the vessel wall where an aneurysm has formed. At the completion of treatment, the aneurysm sac was filled with coils. We can see on the angiogram that all of the space within the aneurysm is now blocked by these coils. Clot will form and prevent the aneurysm from rupturing. When we do the subtracted image, which takes away all the bone and the metal, you can see that there is no longer filling of that sacculation that we saw in the initial study. We now even have the technology to go beyond the carotid artery in the neck and treat areas of narrowing and stenosis in the brain that can be related to atherosclerosis. We've been able to develop these minimally invasive techniques over the past 10 to 15 years because of better devices, better equipment, and the sophisticated imaging equipment that you see here that allows us to create three-dimensional images of the body. We can create volumes where we can actually look in ahead of time and plan what our therapeutic procedures will be. As interventional neuroradiologists, we also treat spinal abnormalities and spinal disease. Um, here at the University of Maryland Medical Center, we were one of the first hospitals uh, to develop percutaneous vertebroplasty for treatment of osteoporotic vertebral compression fractures. This fairly straightforward procedure involves the placement of an acrylic cement into the vertebral body through a small needle. It's done as an outpatient procedure and most patients go home in two to three hours with significant relief of their pain. Once again, I'm Dr. Greg Zorsky, the Director of Diagnostic and Interventional Neuroradiology at the University of Maryland Medical Center, and I thank you for watching.